Hi everyone, and welcome back to The Independent Dollar. Today, we're gonna to be focusing on dividend paying stocks. For those of us who manage our own investments, or if you're looking to start buying stock on your own, an important piece can be trying to find the best stocks for our accounts and individual financial plans. This can be especially important for those of us who are trying to build multiple streams of income. However, the task can sometimes be daunting with all of the options out there right now. So how can we decide which ones to buy? You've probably seen quite a few videos or articles about which dividend paying stocks are the best right now. However, those lists can sometimes be subjective and they're constantly changing. So in keeping with our theme of helping you become more independent with your own money, we're going to take a different angle today and teach you an easy skill to find and pick dividend paying stocks anytime all on your own. By the end of this video, you're going to understand exactly what dividends are, how to easily find a list of dividend paying stocks, a basic skill to help you decide which one to buy, and also the pros and cons of buying dividend stocks in a recession. When you purchase the stock of a company, you're essentially purchasing a slice of that business, which gives you access to a number of really great benefits, such as voting rights or a proportional share of the company's profits. Now, there's a number of ways that companies can unlock these profits and put them in the hands of their shareholders, which is us. This can be in the form of awarding additional shares, paying out a dividend, or buying back stock on the open market. All three of these options will increase the value of your investment in the company, but only one will give you immediate access to cash in your investment account, dividends. So what exactly are dividends? Dividends are the distribution of a company's earnings to each individual shareholder on a representative basis, meaning the company is paying everyone who owns their stock a portion of the profits that they made. You will often see this reported as either a dollar amount per share or a dividend rate. To give you a real life example, let's take a look at Rogers, a large Canadian telecommunications company with their headquarters in Ontario. As of April 1st, 2020, they were paying out 50 cents per share each quarter, so every three months, for each share in the company. Assuming they continue to do this all year, then that means investors will receive $2 each every year for each share that they own. To compare, a competitor like Bell Canada currently pays out 79 cents per quarter or $3.17 per share for the year. Chances are, if you're looking up dividend paying stocks in Canada, then both of these options are gonna pop up just like we showed you. So if Bell is paying out $3.17 per share, which is higher than Rogers, does that mean that Bell Canada is a better option for someone looking for dividend income? To answer that question, you need to look at their dividend yield. The dividend yield will show you how much you have to spend on each stock to purchase it, and then compares it to how much the stock is going to pay you in dividends. Let me show you what we mean. If we use Bell Canada and Rogers as an example, this is how you can find out what their dividend yield is. The dividend yield is their annual dividends per share divided by their share price. We take their current dividend multiplied by four because there's four quarters in a year and they pay their dividends quarterly, and then we divide that by their stock price. This gives us a percentage for each stock. That percentage is their dividend yield. With this calculation, you can see that at current prices, if you invested the same amount in each company, you would get more back in dividends by purchasing shares of Bell Canada instead of Rogers. Now, you do have to be cautious because there are some flaws if you're only using the dividend yield to pick your stocks. For example, higher dividend yields do not always mean a more profitable and stable company, nor should you assume that your investments are guaranteed or safe. In some cases, there may be instances where companies pay out a special dividend once a year, and it gives you the perception that they're always paying out high dividends consistently to their investors, when in reality, that isn't just the case. As well, as stocks move up or down, so will their dividend yield. If you're just starting out with your first brokerage account, an easy way to find dividend paying stocks is to use your stock screener options, which can narrow down your search based on dividend amounts, market caps, country, industry, and many other options. Otherwise, you can easily find dividend paying stocks online with a quick search. The Globe and Mail, for example, posts an online free stock screener that you can use to pull up dividend paying stocks anytime. Once you've picked a few companies to choose from, now you need to decide which ones you're actually going to buy. Now we're going to show you just how easy it is to find a list of stocks using a stock screener. And in this case, we're going to use the one from Globe and Mail. Now to keep things simple so we don't get too many stocks popping up, we're just going to focus on the TSX, but you can really make this search as broad as you like. And just to keep with the theme today, we're going to focus on dividend yield. So we're going to start narrowing things down based on the dividend yield of certain stocks. And in this case, 
Maybe we'll stick between stocks that are offering a yield of say 3 and 6%, but again, you can put in whatever you like. Now, if you're new to investing, one thing that might make things a little bit easier for you is to maybe focus on companies that you're familiar with. And one way to do that is to really just stick to stocks that are from very large corporations. So a way that you can kind of focus only on those larger companies is to narrow things down based on market cap. So if we want to look at market caps that are at least four billion or larger, that's really going to narrow down the size of the list for us. And you're probably going to recognize a lot of stocks or companies that are on that list. So in this case, if we just scroll down here and take a closer look, you probably recognize a lot of names that are on the list and you can kind of resort it based on market cap or dividend yield, whatever is really more useful for you. But as you can see here, Royal Bank of Canada, you probably recognize that. You're gonna see a lot of other hydro telecom companies. So here's TELUS, for example, you probably recognize that company. Sun Life Financial. So there's a lot of different options here for you to choose from. Rogers, Bell, things like that, that you would all recognize. And this will allow you to at least get a list of quick stocks that you can kind of start doing a little bit more research on to decide which ones you're interested in and maybe which ones you want to move forward with to actually invest in. Now that you've decided which stocks to buy, how can you use these dividends to generate another stream of income and boost your savings? Dividends are a great way to supplement your existing income. If you can invest early and often enough, then by the time you reach retirement age or if you've saved enough to retire early, you will be fortunate enough to have a relatively stable source of income in addition to any other pensions or income streams. Take for example an individual with $250,000 in savings whose dividend paying stocks have an average yield of 2.5%. This will produce $6,250 of dividends annually for them to use without them having to sell any of their investments. If you're able to invest and hold on to high dividend yield stocks though, your actual yield may be substantially higher. At 5%, that will give you $12,500 a year. And at 10%, $25,000 a year just in dividend income alone. The great part about purchasing good quality dividend stocks is that over time, the longer that you hold them, the greater the opportunity for your annual dividend income to continue to increase without having to buy any of those shares again. We're going to use CIBC as an example of how dividends grow over time and how that helps us. If you were fortunate enough to have $100,000 in savings to invest in their stock back on January 1st, 2000, then you would have paid $33.40 a share. Those 3,000 shares would have paid you $1.20 a year for each share. That's a yield of 3.59%. Over the years though, their dividend payouts per share steadily increased as well as their stock price. Fast forward 20 years later, and you're now getting paid $5.76 per share on those exact same shares. If we were to look at your original purchase price of $33.40, that means that your current yield is now sitting at 17.2%. With your 3,000 shares, you're now generating $17,280 per year in dividends alone. If you watched our previous videos or read our blog posts on the taxation of investments, then you would know that dividends in most cases are taxed less than some other sources of income, like your salary or your hourly wage, for example. If we took an example to an extreme, let's assume that you had no other sources of income besides dividends. No pension, no RSP income, CPP, GICs, nothing. The current tax rules and dividend tax credit in Canada will allow you to earn slightly over $50,000 per year in dividends without owing any federal or provincial taxes. In BC, Alberta or Ontario, you would actually have to earn $66,000 in salary, for example, to end up with the same $50,000 after tax. In Quebec or New Brunswick, it would be over $70,000. How much would you have to have invested though to actually generate $50,000 a year in dividends? Well, assuming your investments are generating an average dividend yield of 5%, you would need to have saved up $1 million. However, if we look back at our example of CIBC stock, you would only need around 8,700 shares or the equivalent of about $290,000 back in 2000 to achieve that $50,000 target. This shows you the power of investing, especially as early as possible, to generate another stream of income without having to sell a single investment. What about during market downturns like a recession though? Are these stocks still a good buy? While we have made dividends out to be maybe a little bit of a glamorous investing idea, dividends are not always a guarantee as some may lead you to believe. 
During periods of economic stress, companies may decide to reduce or sometimes even halt dividend payments, and this ensures that they have enough cash on hand to continue running their business in the short term, at least until the economy stabilizes. On the other hand, though, a recession or a substantial drop in market prices will allow you to scoop up some really good quality dividend-paying stocks at a discount. Looking at CIBC again, in the last five years, the stock has ranged from as low as $72 to above $120 a share. What once would have cost you $120 a share, equaling a dividend yield of 4.8%, could have been yours for as low as $72 instead, which means a yield of 8% per year. Hopefully this video on dividends has been informative and helpful. As always, you want to do as much research as possible on any company you are buying before you move forward. While we try to be as helpful as possible on this channel, this video is not intended to act as investment advice. So please ensure you always speak with a professional when seeking investment guidance. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you back here next week.